Our guest tonight is Fran Solomon. She is a former nurse who now works for Playfair, a company that teaches both employees and employers how to take themselves less seriously and have a sense of humor. Solomon says as a nurse she learned a long time ago that laughing helps the sick heal faster and says it can't hurt on the job either. What we do, Dave, in our programs is we give people an experience in our presentation about getting back in touch with the child within them, back in touch with the part of them that is very creative, very spontaneous, very full of imagination, play, and, um, and, and, and the part of them that really enjoys the work that they're doing. I'm not saying that we create a circus in the workplace or that the boss needs to stand up and be a stand-up comedian. What it does mean is using playful ways to reward and recognize people. For example, one thing we suggest that people do is set up a ground rule at work that anyone can ask for a standing ovation whenever they want one. Not just when they're having a good day, but especially when they're having a tough day and really need to know that the people in the workplace are going to support them no matter what's going on. I guarantee, Dave, you'll never have another boring meeting if people can ask for standing ovations at any time they want during a meeting. Okay. I'm curious, how do you handle the office sourpuss? There's always one guy or one gal that just is not going to go along with the program. How do you get that handled? Well, the best thing you can do is send them to one of our programs because that we're really the experts at letting people loose. And what you'll find, Dave, is inside the grouchiest, grumpiest, crankiest person you know is someone who is just dying to get out and have a good time, to be given some permission to enjoy his or herself. What was interesting, though, was their reaction to each other. I said, how many of you have a good sense of humor? Put your hand up. There were two guys sitting right in front. One guy put his hand up. The other guy looked at him. <laughs> he said, Frank, put your hand down. She said, tell the truth. <laughs> and what I saw that is I realized is that these people don't experience each other as playful human beings. We can't control what happens to us very often, but we can control how we are going to react and how we're going to respond. And keeping a lighthearted approach is one of the best ways to do that. Now, the reason laughter can do all of these things that I've just discussed is because it's a different kind of communication than most adults experience day to day. You see, 80% of adult communication happens exactly like it's happening right now. Someone is talking, and if you're lucky, someone is listening. Laughter and play, however, happens at what we call the kinesthetic mode, the experiential mode. And this is information you get through your physical body, your emotions, and your feelings. And we're going to have our first kinesthetic break of the conference. In just a moment, I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three, I'd like you to take both your fists, shoot them up over your head, hold them there in a gesture of triumph, and then very proudly and very loudly exclaim, I'm depressed. A lot of you have the picture already. <laughs> well, you're going to need both hands free for this, so if you're taking notes already, it's way too soon. <laughs> Trust me on this one. Here we go together on the count of three. One, two, three. I'm depressed. Uh -huh. Is that a fact? Now, I see a lot of smiling faces out there. Many of you are laughing. Why do you laugh? You laugh because there is a dichotomy. You see, your brain is saying, I feel lousy. But your body is saying, all right. What you actually get is a meltdown of your mind. If you're looking for something more than a lecture, if you're looking for a high energy, audience involvement keynote, leaving participants leaping to their feet in wild applause, then you're looking for Fran Solomon. Most unusual seminars was held Saturday afternoon. It was probably one of the most enjoyable as well. Carol Chartrand was there to check it out for us. Work is no laughing matter. Well, don't tell that to Fran Solomon, Senior Vice Empress of Playfair Incorporated, whose company's motto might as well be, all work and no play makes for a dull business. We created a model for team building and interaction in the workplace that promotes fun and celebration and joy. And we feel that's a great way to implement a uh, positive customer service. We think it's a great way to create community in the workplace and also to deal with stress management and uh, to keep employees motivated and excited and 
You know, the goal really is to keep your best people forever. Her seminar on Saturday at the Javits Center is appropriately called Hilariously Healthy, Learning to Laugh and Play in a Diverse World, and it's a session making lots of noise in the business world. What else does this Crazy business pen, humor consultant have in her bag of tricks? This is the dead rubber chicken pen. Now, if you hand these out at work and people start, you know, filling out forms, or if you have a customer who comes in and they have to sign something, it's a recognition, you know, it's a way of creating a sense of excitement. Formerly a stand-up comedian, this stand-up businesswoman believes that having fun at work is work, but it's work that reaps many rewards. There are numerous humorous and motivational speakers. Fran soars high above the crowd. With over 20 years of experience, a teacher, nurse, and singer, she's engaged the hearts and minds of managers, vice presidents, generals, frontline personnel, doctors, and entrepreneurs. From pencil makers to computer makers, her universal message is a surefire way to get people mingling thinking creatively and energized. All she needs is a microphone, an audio cassette player, and an unlimited number of live bodies. Jason, with beers in his ties, he bent down and gave her a list on the kips. <laughs> well. The Philadelphia Inquirer calls her a Bronx bombshell with the comedic timing of Bob Hope. As senior vice empress, Fran Solomon is on a mission to humanize the workplace through the use of fun and play. Stressed employees, even if they don't file claims, are not good employees. You want people who are able to produce and produce in a happy manner. One, two, three, I'm depressed. The pursuit of happiness is employed as therapy at this conference of student job counselors, strangers under money and time pressure to overcome their inhibitions and learn to work and play as a team. As soon as you hear the whistle, fingers in the air, when you have your partner sit down, one partner only. The therapy provider, a firm called Playfair, part of a fast-growing industry of corporate stress busters who may charge clients from bankers to mayors to realtors thousands of dollars per therapy session. That's really what we're addressing is how to make the corporate culture a culture that supports people's growth, health, and productivity so that we can make bucks, we can have profits, but we can also have people who are well-balanced, healthy, and happy. As a keynote address, breakout session, or workshop, all my programs are entertaining and fun. But their real value comes from the experiential learning, the dynamic audience interaction that ensures full participation. If you would please now go inside your head and ask yourself this question. Do I feel closer to my partner as a result of this experience? Now, most of you feel closer to your partner even if you went zero for nothing. Because you know, if we did this activity for the rest of the morning, sooner or later, you and your partner would get a match. In fact, it would be inevitable. And that is the power of the design of what we call the sink or swim model. That is, everybody sinks or everyone swims together. You need the support and collaboration of your partner in order to make this activity successful. You need to be able to put yourself in their shoes and see how they are going to react and respond. And this is an important quality to develop. You see, sometimes we set goals for ourselves, budgetary goals or health goals, and we can't reach those goals. As I said, the house burns down, things happen beyond our control. But you always achieve the goal of community, of team building, of family, of connection, when you design activities using this model. And as Rich was talking before about diversity, this room is tremendously diverse, but if we look at the general population of this country, we have people from all over the world who we're working with now, people coming from different backgrounds, speaking different languages. If we fill this room with people from all over the planet, young people and old people, people in all walks of life, people who didn't even speak the same language. And we did this activity with them and gave them enough time. You know what would happen sooner or later? 
match, 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 every single time. And it's this ability to psych people in that really helps us get that sense of connection, joy, and celebration in the workplace. Fran's programs are educational and humorous. They create a low-risk, shared history of having fun together as a team. No one is ever singled out or made to appear foolish. The activities start quite simply, and soon everyone is participating. I like the full ovation. Let's give it a chance. Participants learn how to deal creatively with organizational changes, growth, and re-engineering. You'll experience firsthand how team building works, how to take an organization from apathy to exuberance, how to use humor as a pattern breaker to promote innovation and change.